and welcome, I'm your code monkey. The asset store is full of awesome tools and apps to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video, let's check out some highlights for December 25. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video, I already covered the best free new assets, and next one, I'll be covering top visuals and effects. As always, there's links to the asset in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code monkey10 to get 10% off your order. I've been hard at work finishing my problem solving course. This is my advanced practical course to teach you this super valuable skill. This week I recorded a ton of walkthroughs. There are now videos for all 214 practical exercises. I'm trying to be alive as much as possible to help you as soon as you have any questions. And I'm running these special early access bonuses until the end of this month. So if you're interested in discount for the future performance optimization course, or if you want a one hour live consultation with me, if so, then get the course before the end of this month. Or if you're not interested in these bonuses, then wait until January and the price will be lower. Check it out to the link in the description. All right, so starting off with a new version of one of my favorite assets on the entire store, it's Text Animator version three. You probably already know about Text Animator. It's a really excellent tool for animating text in your games. It is super easy to use. You can easily make your text start shaking. You can make it appear in fun ways or then disappear. It's already been used in production by a ton of really successful games. It really is both super easy to use and super capable. Now this one, now version three comes with a bunch of improvements. It includes a brand new animation engine and importantly supports UI toolkit. So that means you can animate both your runtime UI, but also I'm guessing also your edited time UI. So if you want to make your edited tools and make them look a little bit more interesting, if so, then this could be great. Basically this was already an excellent asset and now it's even better. If you already own version 2.0, then you can get this new version with a pretty nice discount. Next, if you have a voxel game and you want to blow some cells off. If so, then look at this asset. It lets you build things with voxels and then blow them up. The destruction is actually quite realistic with some actual physics. So if you blow up both ends of a bridge, then the middle part will just fall down. It even includes rig physics, so you can actually slice a character and the whole thing works. You can make the voxels or the fragments in basically any shape that you want. It doesn't have to be just cubes. So the whole thing is very performant with lots of options. So yep, this one over here, this one seems really impressive. The demo scene with the gravity gun looks and feels super satisfying. So yep, this looks like a really impressive asset. Honestly, I'm amazed that it has no review so far. It seems very well built. Basically, if you want massive voxel destruction, if so, then this over here, this one seems really great. Then here we have a tiny interesting tool. It is called Asset Reference Finder. This one does exactly what it says. It shows you all the references for all of your assets. This is a small thing, but I think it's really cool. As you build larger and larger games, you end up with tons of stuff in your project files, many of which you're probably not using. So this one over here, this one lets you easily see how many references an asset has and actually identify what are those references. Where exactly is that asset being used? This seems like a simple, but a very useful tool. It is all about looking for GUIDs, so it should be pretty fast at scanning, even on some very large projects. Next here's an interesting UI one called bindables. So this one basically lets you bind data to certain elements. So for example, you can bind a health bar to the health bar amount variable. Then as the underlying variable, as that one modifies, the health bar will actually update automatically. So this basically handles all the updating of all the elements for you. You really just need to update the underlying value and the binding object that will update itself automatically. So yep, it seems like this kind of thing makes building a UI much more simple. This works with sliders, it works with text mesh pro elements, it works with images, really all kinds of things. It's definitely a very interesting way of doing things, basically letting the system update it instead of doing it yourself. This works with both Unity UI and UI toolkit. And you can also bind two ways, meaning for example, you can have a slider or some input text field and have the player write something to then automatically update a variable. It supports all kinds of types, including a dictionary and animator. And next up here, we have a UI particle system. This one does exactly what it says. You can have particles in your UI. It includes an interface that is very similar to the standard Unity particle system, but of course you can do all that in the UI. It works on all UI types, including overlay and world space, although I believe it is limited to Unity UI, so not UI token. This package also includes over 100 prefabs that have been pre-prepared for you, so really just drag and drop to add some effects to your UI. This is definitely one of those great ways to add a little bit of polish to your games. Next up, here's a super simple but very interesting one called Scene Layers. With this one, you can basically define some layers and then assign objects to put into those layers. And with a simple click, you can do all kinds of things. For example, you can enable or disable all those objects. Then it also has lots of settings to customize it perfectly with colors and everything. So if this seems really great, especially when working with large levels, you can, for example, make a layer to include all the geometry, and then you can hide it when you want to just look at characters, or perhaps make a layer for all the pathfinding widgets and hide them when you just want to build a level, or make a layer just for all the lighting, all decals, all those things, which you can then disable in order to do some nice level design and a more simple interface. So yep, a quite simple but potentially very useful tool. 
Next up, here's another interesting tool. This one is called the Debug Filter. This one basically has a different way of having a console. So instead of seeing all the messages in just a single list, instead of that, you actually see a tree of all of your objects, all of your scripts, and you can then expand each leaf of the tree to see just logs from just that one object, just that one script. This can definitely be quite useful if you have tons of logs and warnings coming from all over the place. I would normally say that a better approach is basically to just limit the number of logs, but if you really do need tons of logs from tons of objects, if so, then this is a nice simple tool that can help keep things quite a bit more organized. Then for another tool that is useful in level design, here we have Clever Clicker. This is a simple tool to help you when clicking on overlapping objects, usually selecting the thing that you want. If there's tons of stuff over on top of one another, if so, you have to click multiple times. It's really a nightmare. Whereas with this one, with this asset, it really just shows a nice mini window with all the objects under the cursor. That way you can very easily select exactly the one you want and that's it. So if you regularly work on some very busy scenes, if so, then this can save you quite a bit of frustration. Next up, here we have another new version of a previous asset. It's Mirage Pro. This is an imposter system meaning it's something that takes your complex 3D models with lots of polygons and converts them into simple billboards when they are far away. This is an excellent way to gain a massive FPS boost. If then well, like this asset, then you can really not tell the difference. As objects get closer or far away, they use fewer polygons, but visually they look pretty much the same, so it's a great way of getting some close to free performance. This one, this is the new enhanced pro version, and if you own the original, then this pro version shows up as completely free, at least it did for me. So yep, nice update, nice tool. Or if you need to simulate a stock market, if so, look at this one. This is definitely something very niche, and this one seems to be very well built, a very robust simulation. It's not really just bar charts, nope, it's much more than that. For example, it actually has a real-time order system, so stocks can get bought or sold at the limit as intended, or you can make a market order, you can do partial fills or cancellations, you've also got a dynamic new system, then there are scenarios that can trigger massive shocks in the market. So the whole thing is very interesting, very strange. Personally, I have no idea what game would need a system like this. But I guess if you do, if you have some kind of management game and you want to have a very complex stock market, if so, then this looks great. All right, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on Unity Asset Store for December 25. There's links to all in the description. And as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.